Hello everybody, welcome this morning. I'm Susie Shock. Um, and I'm going to guide you through an unknown adventure this morning. I have my little cat Hanky. Um, she's creating some shenanigans right off of screen, so uh, you know the phrase trying to herd cats. We'll see how this goes. She may fly through the screen every once in a while, but that's life at my house. So I hope you're all doing well this morning. And we are going to do um, probably around a 60 minute vinyasa flow. And there she goes. Just welcome Hank. Hank is playing with the mat right now. All right, friends. Um, let's start seated, closing your eyes and just get a comfortable cross-legged seat, palms facing down, posture of grounding, palms facing up, posture of receiving, and do just a small and quick little internal inventory, feeling sitting bones rooted down into the earth. Take a deep breath as if you're pulling it in from the crown of the head, and let it just spiral down your beautiful chakra pillar, down the spine, root yourself into the earth. Visualize you're just growing roots down into the earth with every inhale. It's starting from the crown of the head. Breathing in and in and in and down the chakra pillar, down the spine, through the base of the spine, into the earth, growing roots a little bit deeper. Take another one just like that, breathing in. Beautiful, slowing everything down, noticing the subtleties in the body, asking those questions if you have things that are showing up. Um, what are you all about? Let's say you have a headache, a little tweak in the back, stomach ache, intestinal stuff. Just ask those questions, allowing your divine wisdom to kind of step in and give you some answers to this. Um, I really recommend when you're hearing something to not dismiss it because your body and your wisdom is trying to communicate something to you. So before we move on into the asana practice, just asking, what do I need to know? What do I need to know about this, that, or the other thing? and gently holding a space for whatever wisdom is coming forward. Um, and throughout our asana practice, let's unpack some of that information you're receiving. Your internal wisdom, your intuition will come in different forms. Sometimes it'll come in words, images. It'll express itself through body aches. That kind of thing. All right, one more full, even breath. And just a very passive exhale out. Let's find child's pose. Knees to the outside edges of the mat and big toes to touch. Settling back. Sitting bones reaching towards the heels. Extending the hands up and overhead as best you can, taking cactus arms if it doesn't feel good to be arms straight up. Sometimes I take a nice little wide stance and I just sway side to side, back and forth. Stepping into your ujjayi breath, breathing in through the nose, out through the nose, that slight constriction in the back of the throat. Gives it that really beautiful sound, that ocean type of sound, and that meditative quality. To me, when I kick into my ujjayi breath, it's like this instant moving meditation, instant calm. Beautiful. So if you're not already up onto the forearms, lifting up onto the forearms and just resting again, palms facing down, feeling the earth below the hands, below the knees, below the tops of the feet, and start to sway with your breath. Just waking up the body a little bit, waking up the spine. One more breath.
Good, coming back to center. Extending hands a little bit further, not all the way out, so that hands are a little bit in front of the shoulders, and then let's just do big hip circles. Again, waking up through the hips and the back, reversing our flow. Nice. Coming back to center again, let's start cat and cow. So in a nice tabletop, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Tipping the tailbone to the sky on the inhale, let the belly come through, let the chest come through. Chin lifts, crown of the head to the sky. Stretch the breath out. Now tip the tailbone to the mat, let the belly come through. Tip the chin to the chest and just reverse. Beginning to find breath with movement. That beautiful union because if you're not following the breath with your flow, your body doesn't have the ability to communicate as well. As soon as your breath is off, you can tell that something else might be off within the body too. Nice. Now let's just speed up the pace again. So we're increasing the breath. So inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Three more. Tabletop. Join the belly in nice and firm. If wrists are getting to fatigue, come up to the fists. So palms will be facing each other and then come to the fists. Find what works for you. Our right, belly's pulled in like that internal hug, the lower abdominals tucking in nice and tight. Extending right arm and left leg, now firing the glutes as well, squeezing them nice and tight into the midline. Good, extending right arm, left leg. My ear is by my bicep or my bicep's by my ear. And right now I'm just pulsing my foot or pulsing the leg just a little bit. Just pulsing down, four, three, two, one. Reach long through the heel, reach out through the fingertips. Inhale, exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, exhale. Three more. Two. One, extend it long, staying as you are. Maybe lower the toes down to the mat if you need a little bit of a break or bringing foot to hand. I like to flex my foot so I've got a little bit of a hook to grab onto or a handle almost. Go to get that nice little front body stretch. Pausing here, three and two. Extending it long on one, lowering it down. Sway the hips a little bit side to side. Good, and let's just pull back, sitting on the heels and stretch the wrists out a little bit. So I'm just gonna flip onto the tops of my hands with fingers facing my knees. Couple breaths like that. Good. And then just flip the other way. Fingertips still facing the knees, but stretching out through the wrists, through the forearms. You can almost feel it all the way down into the thumbs. Good. And little wrist circles. Ah. All right, tabletop. Lower abdominals tucked in. Like if you were to cough, those are the muscles that you would feel, right between the hip bones. All right, internal hug, internal corset. Left arm, right leg reaches long. Good. Try to separate the ribs from the um, hips, the low ribs from the hips. So we're really lengthening through the midline of the body or through the um, between the ribs and the hips. I'm reaching out through the heel. My glutes are firing nice and firm. Take an inhale. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale. Exhale. We're moving swiftly. Four more. Three. Two. 
One, pause and hold. I forgot the little pulsing, so just little pulsing of the toes towards the mat. They're not gonna touch. But I'm just firing my glute, getting it nice and warm, and my abdominals and my spine are supporting this little pulsing. Let's do four, three, two, and one. Staying as you are, or lower the toes to the mat, or bringing foot into hand, and kicking that foot into the hand. Good, reach it long, lower it down. Sit back on the heels again, little circles of the wrists. If I'm feeling it, I'm sure you're feeling it. Good, and try this little exercise. So I'm rotating my hands in one direction. Now try to switch directions. And <laughs> if this isn't like one of these little mind puzzles, to get your hands to flow. There, now I've got to flow in the other direction. All right, <laughs> enough playing. Um, let's step into high plank pose now. We're gonna do the same thing, firing up the lower abdominals, firming the glutes. My shoulders are over my wrists. Little micro bend in the elbows so that you're not locking them out and relying just on the structure, on the bone structure. Think of muscle hugging the bone. And I'm just pedaling my knees. Four, three, two. Slowly pedaling as I'm lifting my hips high into downward facing dog. Let the head hang heavy. Pedal it out into wide legged. Downward dog, swaying the hips. Little pop, little pop here and there. Good, lots of popping actually. I'm walking it back into the center. All right, let's warm up the shoulders and the core. That would mean belly and spine. As we kind of unravel, let's find a cat spine almost and then into a straight spine into plank. And hips lift back high again, melting heels down towards the mat. Find a cat spine, belly to spine into plank, and back into down dog. Now let's move the pace. Good, into plank, down dog, into plank, down dog, into plank, down dog. You've got the idea. Move with your breath. One more time. And shift it all the way forward, lower all the way down to the mat, thumbs brushing the low ribs, Again, warming up the spine a little bit more, setting up for cobra, so the tops of my feet are pressing down. My quadriceps are nice and firm, so my knees are actually off the mat. Tops of the feet press, glutes are firm, belly's firm, good. Neck is long. Inhale, lift cobra pose. Exhale, lower down, tap the nose. Inhale, lift cobra pose. Exhale, tap down. Let's do three more. Inhale, lift, and lower. Inhale, lift, and lower. Inhale, lift, maybe hover the hands, pause, three, two, one, tap the nose, pull back. Child's pose feels so good, sway it for a minute, or a couple of breaths. Nice, inch the fingers forward, inch the sitting bones back. Draw the shoulders away from the ears, inhale. Exhale, curling toes under, moving back into downward facing dog. Head hangs heavy. Stretch and lengthen up that cervical spine. And if you have a hard time having the head hang heavy, bend the knees, pull the belly back towards the thigh, get the spine nice and long. Good, inhaling, right leg high. Ah, <laughs> bend the knee, open the hip. Circle the knee around if you'd like. Nice. Good. Let's square it off. Reach the toes long. Inhale. Exhale. Right knee, right tricep. Pause and just breathe into that. Good. Inhale. Bring it nice and high. Right knee, left tricep. Just breathe into it. Hold, hold, hold. Good. Bring it nice and high. Knee comes to the nose. Carve out the belly. Pause and hold. Ease it into low lunge. 
Coming to fists now. Palms facing each other, find the fist. Good, inhale, let's lift the hips. Bend the back knee, pull the hips back, and then lower back into lunge. Lift and straighten the legs. Bend the back knee, pull the hips back, and back into lunge. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Two more. One more. Drop down to the bottom knee. Sweeping hands up and overhead, Anjaneyasana, low lunge. Find that little baby back bend. Nice. Maybe bringing hands to clasp, steeple grip. Take a little side body bend to the right. Coming back to center, I like to bring my hands to the back of my head and stretch out my pectoral muscles a little bit here. Good, releasing hands down to the mat. Left hand will stay grounded, deep breath in, and exhale, take a little twist. Good, staying as you are, hand to knee or maybe hand to the back foot. Increasing the stretch through the quadricep of the back leg. Gentle release. Ground the hands, point your fingers facing the front of the room. The rest of the fingers are spread out evenly from there. Stepping front foot to meet the back. There's Hank. <laughs> Shift forward, pinning the elbows in, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. I pause in my up dog the first couple times um, just to get that nice stretch, but boy do I have my core engaged, right? So that I'm not dumping into my low back. And then find downward facing dog. leg higher. Bend the knee, open the hip. So I don't know about most of you, some of you, um, but I suffer from anxiety, especially in the morning times. So a nice little yoga class really helps kind of move that nervous energy out and through. All right, let's square it off. Bring your left knee, left tricep. Pause and hold. Good. Inhale, bring the leg high. Left knee, right tricep. Pause and hold. Good. Inhale, bring it high. Knee comes to nose, carve out the belly. Finding low lunge. Coming to fists. Inhale, lift the hips. Exhale, pull back, bend the back knee. And back into lunge. Good. Inhale, lift, pull back. Exhale, forward lunge. Lift, pull back. Three more. Two. One, drop down to the back knee, Anjaneyasana, low lunge, sweeping the arms up and overhead. Internal hug, right? Think of everything squeezing into the midline. Nice, find that steeple grip with the hands if you want to get that side body bend. Beautiful. Back to the center, grounding the hands. Right hand will stay planted, left will come to the knee. Moving into a little gentle twist, staying as you are, or if you'd like, grab the back foot. Nice, release it. Coming back. 
Hands plant right under the shoulders, point your fingers facing the front of the room, step back plank. Modification, come to knees, inhale, shift forward, exhale, lower all the way down to the mat. Inhale, cobra pose rather than up dog. Pulling through downward facing dog. It's a beautiful thing. Deep breath in. Even breath out. Let's take a little twist here too. So walking the feet out wide. Walking the hands in just a little bit. Left hand lifts, inhale, exhale, grabbing outside of the thigh, the calf, or the ankle. Trying to keep the hips square. Release the left hand down. Lifting right hand, inhale, and exhale, a little twist. Good morning. Nice. Release the hands. Walk it back in. Take an inhale. Let's roll up onto all ten toes. Bend the knees. Bring the belly back to the thighs. Taking it to the top of the mat. Inhale halfway. Exhale ragdoll pose. If it's a morning class, for me it is right now. You may be doing this at night. But in the morning, my spine or most people's spine gets very compressed as we sleep, we become dehydrated, and so taking it easy on your forward bends um, is really important through all of the class, no matter what time of the day, but most especially in the morning, giving your body some time to rehydrate and slowly decompress. Good, I'm gonna interlace my hands, take them behind me. Little chest expansion feels really nice too. It not only stretches through the front of the shoulders, the anterior deltoids and the pectorals, but I get this amazing stretch all the way from my sitting bones, running along both sides of my spine up to my shoulder blades. Especially when you bend the knees and you just really allow the spine versus the hamstrings to stretch and lengthen. And then roll the weight gently into the balls of the feet. Gaze between the knees. Let the hands hang heavy. Just let them drape back down to the mat. Let the blood go back down into the arms, into the hands. All is well. All right, friends, let's come to a halfway lift, a nice long spine. And then on your inhale, reverse your swan dive all the way up into Tadasana Mountain Pose. And then bringing hands to heart center, Samastu Tahi. Stepping the feet so they're hip distance if they're not there already. Closing the eyes, just take a moment to reground in your standing posture. Tadasana is the foundational pose for all of the standing postures and many of the seated. If you can line yourself up in Tadasana, you'll have success and ease in your practice. So grounding the feet, four corners of the feet, breathing from the crown of the head, let it spiral down, anchor through the body, through the feet, into the earth. And doing that again. Now let the vibration of the earth return through the feet. Feel it coming up through the legs. Slowly draw the kneecaps up. Fire the quadriceps. Feel that wrap around. Fire the glutes. Pulling up through the midline now. So think of the mula bandha. The pelvic floor lifts and fires all of those little muscles supporting the abdominals and the spine. The transverse abdominals fires as well. And I'm going to lift it up even higher. My shoulders are going to come up, back, and down, chest is open, palms face the front of the mat. All is well. So namaskar A, inhale, arms up. Exhale, so and dive forward, fold. Inhale, open, halfway lift. Exhale, ground the hands, flow through your vinyasa. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. 
Know that it could be cobra pose instead, if I don't call that out. Or you can simply just lift from plank pose into downward facing dog. Find what works for you. On your next inhale, roll up onto all ten toes, bend the knees, belly to thighs. Exhale, walk to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, reverse swan dive, Tadasana. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, open, halfway lift. Exhale, ground the hands, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. And out. Inhale, prepare to move. Exhale, top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, Tadasana. Exhale, open baby back bend this time. Inhale, palms to touch steeple grip. Exhale, side body bend. Pause and hold. Inhale, center. Exhale, side body bend. Pause and hold. Good. Inhale, center. Exhale, interlace hands behind you or grab opposite elbow or strap. Take a little shoulder shrug, opening up the heart space. Nice. Ah, now slowly bend the knees, bring the belly to the thighs. Move into that forward fold, chest expansion, rolling the weight into the balls of the feet. Head hangs heavy. Long breath in. Even breath out. Good. Hands hang heavy to the mat. Halfway lift. Ground the hands, Chaturanga Dandasana. You could be on knees and take Chaturanga. And then upward facing dog. How does it feel through your shoulder girdle? That's what you want to ask. How does it feel through the upper body as you're lowering in Chaturanga? Because we want to be safe and have a lifelong practice. All right. Long breath in. And top of the mat. Inhale halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale into sweet chair pose, Utkatasana. Weight in the heels now. Okay, think of Tadasana in your chair pose. Heels are grounded. Balls of the feet are supportive. Run the energy up the backside, firm the glutes. Zip it up, reaching fingertips high. Full breath in. Exhale, open mouth. Airplane arms, inhale. Exhale, two more. Dump it out. One more. Slow it down. Inhale. Exhale, hands to the heart. Forward fold. Inhale, open. Halfway lift. Exhale, ground the hands. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, aim right leg high. Exhale, bend the knee. Open the hip. Inhale, square it off. Right knee, right tricep. Inhale, bring it high. Right knee, left tricep. Good, bring it high. Knee comes to the nose, pause and breathe, inhale. Exhale, low lunge. Stabilize, all the things from Tadasana, apply it to crescent lunge as you sweep it all the way up. Pulling into the midline, lifting up, getting nice and long. Good, full breath in. Exhale, gentle twist. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale, warrior two. Good, inhale, let's rise. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, rise. Exhale, lower. Two more times. Inhale. Ease into it. Knee tracks out to the pinky toe. One more. Exhale, pause and hold warrior two. Good. Pressing the feet in opposing directions. Gain some stability here. Again, lift it up into the midline. Arms extend long. Let's bring palms to the sky so shoulder blades go back into place. Palms back down to the mat. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, extended side angle. Find what works for you here. We'll be here for a few breaths. So for me, I love to do a little side body work because I'm very tight and very short through the low lumbar. So this feels really nice to me. Maybe you want to take a half bind. Maybe you want to take a whole bind. Whole bind doesn't feel good to me this morning, so I'm going to pause on that. One more beautiful breath. Good. Let's reverse our triangle. Reach up and reach back. 
Good, then move into extended side angle. And then reverse triangle. Extended side angle. See your thighs starting to feel it? Reverse triangle. Extended side angle one more time. Reverse triangle. Trikonasana. Triangle pose. Now don't rely just on flexibility here, right? If you can touch the floor, don't rest on that hand. Use the core strength to hold you in this position. Are your hips stable? That's the most important piece. If your hips aren't stable and you're just relying on flexibility, eventually, eventually, your hips aren't gonna feel so well. We wanna support the joints. Good, two more breaths. One more. Good, bend the knee, extended side angle. Reverse warrior. Half moon. Yikes. Half moon, how stable are you this morning? Or this evening, whenever you're doing the practice. The lifted leg is as active as a standing leg. Quadricep is lifting up. Glutes are nice and tight. Let's hold here for three, two, Square the hips off on one, left leg lifts high, standing splits. Let's get a little glute work in here. Inhale, lift it high. Exhale, sit back into a little curtsy squat. Inhale, lifts it high. Exhale, curtsy. Good, lift it high. Curtsy. Lift it high. Curtsy. Let's do four more. Beautiful three. Weight in the heel. And two. And one. Fall back into that little curtsy squat. Pause and hold for three, two, one. Lift the leg high. Now bend the knee, flex the foot. And we're just going to pulse the foot up towards the sky. Pulsing it. Pulse. Squeeze your glute. Squeeze and squeeze. A lot of low back pain can come from weak glutes. So. Yes, we can even strengthen them in yoga. Good, just little pulses and pulse, pulse and pulse. Four, three, two, and one. Good, bring the feet down together. Inhale, find a halfway lift. Actually walk it up a little bit more. So heads above the heart. And then fold, again halfway lift. And fold. Nice, relax. Inhale, halfway lift. And fold. Forward folds are cooling postures. One more time, halfway lift. And fold. Good, halfway lift. Ground the hands, move through your flow. High to low push up. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Grounding breath. You can take an open mouth exhale if you need to get rid of some heat. And let's set up for the other side. Inhale, left leg. Exhale, left knee, left tricep. Good. Inhale, left leg. Left knee, right tricep. Inhale, high. Knee to the nose. Pause and breathe. Beautiful low lunge. Stabilize everything. <laughs> and reach it up into crescent lunge. Squeezing into the midline. That means glutes. Pulling up at the pelvic floor, stacking the spine. Hands come up and overhead. Deep breath in. Exhale, gentle twist. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, rise. Exhale, lower. Good. Let's rise. And lower. Lifting up. And lower one more time. Lifting up. And lower. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, extended side angle. You can explore it with whatever you enjoy doing in your extended side angle. I'm going to take more of a side body stretch here. Half bind, whole bind, or just fingertips floor to sky. All of them work. Ah, nice breath in. Even breath out. Beautiful. One more. And let's slowly reverse our triangle. Side body stretch here, separating low ribs from the hips. Another inhale. Exhale, extended side angle. Inhale, reverse the triangle. 
extended side angle, knee tracks out. Triangle, extended side angle, one more. Extended side angle, I'm not really counting. <laughs> Reverse your triangle. Trickin' us in a triangle pose. Stability in the hips, right? Stability in the hips. Because look at my upper body. I have all of this flow and movement with my upper body because my hips are stable, communicating down to my feet, which are grounded and rooting down. And now I can just explore my strength through the core. Holding here. Beautiful three. And two. Get a bend in the knee on one. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, half moon. Ardha Jandrasana. Leg is lifted. It's hard to see, and it's sometimes it's really hard to tell, but that lifted leg is parallel with the mat. And I have no idea right now. I think it's parallel. And this is all part of just understanding body awareness, where you are in space. All right, holding here. Three, two, square it off, standing splits on one. Lift the leg nice and high. Really tightening the right glute. Take an inhale and exhale, a little curtsy squat. Weight goes into the heel. Inhale, bring it high, curtsy squat. Bring it high, curtsy squat. Really squeeze it as you lift. Good. I'm assuming it's good. I cannot see you. Let's do four more. And three. And two. And one, sit back in that little curtsy squat. If it isn't good, take child's pose, right? Who cares? Hold here, three, two, one. Lift the leg high, get a bend in the knee, foot is flexed, so foot is reaching up to the sky, and just little pulse, pulse, and pulse, and pulse. Life is good when your butt is strong for, actually we need a little more than that. A little more time than four, three, two, one. Good, keep going. Keep going. All right, now four and three and two and one. Bring the feet together or hip distance. Walk the hands up the thighs. Get the head higher than the heart. Take just a breath here. And let's cool it off in our forward fold. So forward folding. Open halfway lift, unravel the spine. Bend the knees, forward fold. Belly connects to the thigh. Open halfway lift, forward fold, halfway lift, forward fold and hold. Just breathe into it. Good, halfway lift. Ground your beautiful hands, step back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. I'm gonna pause this for just a moment because this is feeling really good. And everyone just meet me in Downward Facing Dog when you're ready. Good, nice. Breathing in and breathing out. All right, let's roll up onto all ten toes, bend the knees, belly to thighs. Take ourselves to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, Utkatasana, chair pose, weight in the heels. Hands come to heart center, moving into prayer twist or gentle twist. To the right. Feel what um, looks in your body. So inhaling center and exhale. Find your rotation. Remember when you are in chair pose, weight is in the heels. You're wanting to pull the sitting bones back. And as you're rotating, you're lengthening. Belly's coming through, shoulders coming through, gaze is coming through. So rotate from the lower spine out through the crown of the head. Breathing in, breathing out. One more breath. Woo, coming to Tadasana. Bringing the hands to heart center, just take a pause. All is well. Slow everything down. Who says you don't get a cardio workout in Vinyasa Yoga? Sit back in your chair. Weight in the heels. Could be a gentle twist, left arm back, right arm forward, or hands can come to heart center, inhale, and then exhale, rotate, 
Elbow comes to the outside of the knee. Pulling back so knees are over ankles. Hands to fly if you'd like, half line, hold line. It's a beautiful thing. Good. From the glutes, you'll have a better time here. Holding three. And two. Good, this time forward, fold on one. Toe heel the feet, hip distance. Let's take Padahastasana. Hands planted underneath the feet. Toes kissing the wrist. Rolling the weight forward and bend the knees again as much as you need to to enjoy this so that the spine can lengthen and not be stressed. Or compromised for that matter, right? Be so kind to your spine. Someone should start a public service announcement on that. All right, release. Let's find a yogi squat. I always find that very refreshing and a nice little reset. So knees pointing out towards the corner of the mat, toes pointing out to the corners of the mat. I actually like to use my forearms, so I'll turn to the side and show you what my yogi squat looks like. I like to take it a little bit deeper and just use my forearms to kind of help me open up versus this. I actually do both, but I enjoy this quite a bit. Listening, listening, and if this doesn't feel good, come down into Baddha Konasana, right? Take the stress out of your practice, Baddha Konasana. This certainly does not feel good for everyone. Just as other postures don't feel as good to me. Okay, a couple more breaths, just as we are. Nice. And from your yogi squat, let's just ground the hands, step back, and flow through your vinyasa. Finding up dog or cobra. And downward facing dog. All right. Here we go again. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, bend the knee, open the hip. Stay as you are. Or this time, let's slip your dog. Get a little more front body opening. Freedom. And then reground the hands, square the hips up. Extended long. Right knee, right tricep. Lift it high. Right knee, left tricep. Bring it high. Knee to the nose. Carve out the belly. Low lunge. Stabilize from the glutes. Pull up on the pelvic floor as you stack the spine, which you arms up and overhead. Inhale, hands to heart center. Exhale. Revolve crescent lunge. Woo. Good. Revolve crescent lunge. You can stay as you are or duck down to the bottom knee. Again, stay as you are. Or hands to fly or a gentle twist. There's so many options. Find again what feels good in your spine. Come back to the center. Drop down to the back knee. Straighten the front leg. Pull back into half splits. Coming forward. Half splits. Coming forward. Half splits. Coming forward. And half splits. Pause and hold. Let the toes come back towards the nose. Have the knee bent as much as you need to. And then just enjoy your fold. You could also take full Hanumanasana, full splits, if that's in your practice. Hmm. How do you feel now compared to the beginning of your practice? I feel world of difference than when I began. All right, let's shift forward and find runner's lunge. Walking the foot out to the corner of the mat. 
Now, if you want more fitness, pop back up on the knee and then grab the outside of the foot or ankle. One goes under, one goes over. And then you can just kind of lift and lower if you want to have a little more glute work here. Otherwise, just rest in your beautiful runner's lunge. So what I shared with you in the beginning is that my mornings usually start um, fairly anxious. And I need to really work every morning through meditation, through yoga, to get myself feeling grounded and back in my body again. Um, and it's not always easy, you know, in the morning, you're thinking, oh, I can just skip that and just dive right into work again. But I promise you, the days that you don't practice, look at your productivity versus the days when you do in the morning. I noticed a huge difference in my attitude, in my mood, in my focus and concentration. Finally, stay as you are, and maybe you want to take a little twist here. Grabbing onto the back foot. Perfect. Coming back to the center. Grounding the hands. Front foot meets the back. Let's just march it out a little bit. Just march it. To the center first, little bend, micro bend in the elbows, march it out to the side, to the side, to the side, good, four, three, two, and one, from here come down onto forearms, elbows are right underneath the shoulders, and we're going to roll into Vashistasana from forearms on the right side, so I'm balancing on my right elbow. Doesn't really matter which side you choose. If you've gone to the other side, don't switch. I like to crisscross my legs. That feels more stable. You can certainly stack them. You can lift the leg. Whatever feels better to you. This feels great to me. I'm feeling it nicely, but my shoulder feels very stable. <sighs> side plank. <laughs> Hold here. Three, two, center on one. Just pause here and rock it forward and back a little bit. Rocking forward and back. Dum -da dum Good, come up on hands. Pull back, downward facing dog. Long breath in, even breath out. Good, lifting left leg high. Bend the knee, open the hip. Stay as you are, or flip your dog. Ta -da. Do you sometimes feel like a toddler going, look what I can do? <laughs> All right, let's square it off. Left leg lifts high. Left knee, left tricep. Bring it high. Left knee, right tricep. Bring it high. Knee comes to the nose, carve up the belly. You're in low lunge. We're squeezing and stabilizing. Lift it up to crescent lunge. All right, hands come to heart center. Once again, could be a gentle twist. It could be down on the back knee, or we can move into full revolve crescent lunge. <sighs> Opening hands to fly, if that's in your practice, maybe taking a half or a whole bind. Nice, gentle release. Come back to the center. Drop down to the back knee. Let's pull back and forth. Just loosening up, letting the blood flow again through the joint. Just a little compression that you do when you're in a twist. So it's nice to just let the blood just whoosh right through the joint again. All right, one more. And then pulling back, half splits 
Ardha Hanumanasana or full slits Hanumanasana. Whatever makes you feel good on this beautiful day. So the reason why I have shared with you my anxiety in the morning is because even though I do, most days I do meditation and yoga and asana practice, I don't do it every day, but most days, and even though I'm practicing those, I still manage it, manage anxiety. So I just want to make all of you feel like, um, it's okay and it's normal and there are things that can make you to feel make you feel better help you to feel better good let's shift forward runner's lunge now remember you can do more challenge runner's lunge hand under hand over and lift and lower Lift and lower, lift and lower. Or you can take the restorative one on the back knee. Find what works for you. Really dig into that very deep breath. Let go of anything that isn't serving you right now and just move into like a beautiful mantra. When I'm feeling anxious, my mantra is I am love, I am love, I am love, I am love. I just keep reminding myself the essence of who I am, the essence of humanity is love. Love and joy. It is your right to feel joy. And your body will certainly communicate when it hasn't felt joy in a while. Do what you can to create that shift. For me, it's usually something physical or some really deep breathing. All right, let's come back to the center. Ground the hands. Front foot's going to meet the back and just march it out a little bit. Marching, march. Loosen everything up. Good, march it to the tricep now. Little micro bend in the elbow. Hug the bone with the bicep tricep. Let's march four, three, two, and one. From here, come down into forearms. Elbows are right underneath the shoulders. Moving into Vashistasana on the opposite side of whatever you did before. Make sure that shoulder blade is back and down into the spine. If you are doing it from your hand, notice, are you locking out the elbow? Because it's easier to go onto the hand, lock out the elbow, and rely on the bones to hold you there, and the joints. I want the muscles to hold you there. Good, let's bring it back to the center. And just shift back and forth just a little bit. Little micro movements. Rolling on the balls of the toes. Let's do four. And three. And two. Guess what you've earned? <laughs> child's pose. Sitting back, let's do a traditional child's pose. So knees are together, arms come down to your side, forehead melts to the earth. Feel free if you need a little sip of water. We made it down to the mat and we tackled all of our spine strengthening in our standing sequence. So yay for us. Now let's get a little front body opening. So I want to do a little stretch though of the spine before we move out of child's pose. So if it feels okay to you grabbing onto heels 
or just staying in your child's pose, grabbing onto heels, finding rabbit pose. So right now you're in your forehead, and as you lift the hips, you're going under the top of the head, and I am looking right between my knees. Really nice stretch through the traps and the lats, cervical spine, thoracic spine, and then lower down. <sighs> All right, let's come to sit on the heels. Cross the legs, pull the feet through. I'm not gonna do much here, but I would like to do just a little boat pose. So find the sitting bones, lowering the hips back. I stay just like this with arms extended long. You can do whatever feels good if you wanna lengthen the legs or one at a time. But most of my regular clients know that I have broken both my tailbone and my sacrum in multiple places, and so it doesn't feel good to me to extend my legs. My hip flexors kick in over my core muscles, and so right now I'm getting a really nice little engagement through the core, gentle little pulsing, I'm able to talk, I'm able to breathe, and most of all, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I'm not in suffering. Good, a couple more breaths. Get really good breaths. One more. All right, let's move in to half boat. Half boat, half boat, half boat. Reaching arms up and overhead, let everything melt down to the mat. Reaching fingertips to toes, inhale, and then open mouth, exhale. Hmm. All right, bend the knees. Heels come to the sitting bones. I'm going to need to take the hair out. My ponytail won't let me do this. Heels to the sitting bones. Feet are hip distance apart. Bridge pose. So you can put a block underneath the sacrum if you want more of a restorative bridge. Or you can just slowly tip the tailbone off the mat. Lift the hips. Low back, thoracic spine. Shimmy the shoulders underneath. Maybe interlace. Gazing at the sky. Now we're drawing chest to chin, not chin to chest. And lowering down in your own timing. Supta Baddha Konasana, hand to heart, hand to belly. You could windshield wiper the knees side to side. What's a nice reset? Maybe chin to, or excuse me, knees to chest. <sighs> All right, plant the feet. Second set of either bridge or if you want to do your full wheel. Full wheel doesn't always feel great to me in the morning because I'm still kind of waking up my spine, but I'm going to see how it goes. If it doesn't feel right, come back down and find another variation. All right, so deep inhale and lifting into that inhale. Not so bad. We did a lot of um, warming up and strengthening through the spine, so Oftentimes that'll help you in your spine strengthening and front body opening postures. Good, and coming down in your own time again. Find your reset. Supta Baddha Konasana, maybe knees into the chest in little circles. Or windshield wiper. All right, let's take a 
figure four on your back. So crossing ankle over knee. You can stay there with the foot planted. You can put the foot on the wall, which is really nice. Or grab between um, the, the foot or the calf and the knee. I'm not explaining that well at all. <laughs> right ankle cross over left knee, so you're grabbing behind the left knee. Is that better? Now we've been here for a few breaths, so you can stay as you are as hips are opening, or you can slowly cross at the inner thighs and grab the outside edges of the shins. And drawing thighs to chest, tipping tailbone down towards the mat is going to increase that stretch even more. Let's gently release, keeping legs crossed. So if they're not here already, crossing thigh over thigh, right over left. Um, I'm just going to take a little supine twist with my legs crossed. So if it doesn't feel good, uncross them, knees together, and twisting knees over to the left. So taking an inhale and exhale, little rotation. Shoulder blades are grounded evenly. Gazing out to the right fingertips, knees are to the left. And come back to the center. Let the left foot stay planted. Bring the right knee into the chest. Take an inhale and extend the foot to the sky. So knee could be bent. It could be straight. Doesn't make any difference to me. And just grabbing the back of the hamstring or the calf, or maybe you can reach all the way up to the toe. Again, there's, there's no prize for whatever you can grab. Just find what feels okay where you're receiving a nice little stretch but you're not injuring yourself. So if you're still not feeling anything, you can lengthen the leg as well. Reaching the heel to the sky. So I really enjoy grabbing behind the calf a little bit, and then like I'm lengthening the backside, almost like I'm running the muscle back up towards the heel. And then lifting the head, neck and shoulders. And feel free again to bend the knee. That feels good too, and straightening it, bending and straightening. And lowering down, grabbing the inside arch, and just taking a half happy baby. Playing around a little bit. You can even go to the point where you're straightening the leg if you'd like. Knee can be bent as well. Bent or straight, the left one. Make sure that the hips stay planted on the mat if you're going to straighten the leg out. If you're straightening the right leg, the left hip's going to want to lift a little bit. So I just firmly press down on my left hip bone as my right leg's extending so they stay balanced. Good. And other side. Let's 
Take figure four, so cross your left ankle over right knee. You can stay with the right foot planted, or you can lift and grab behind the right knee. Good. Staying as you are, or crossing with the inner thighs, now taking a little deeper. Inner thighs squeezing together, grabbing the outside of the shins, drawing thighs to the belly, tailbone tipping towards the earth. And then gentle release. We'll take a little supine twist here so legs can stay crossed, or you can uncross them with knees together. Deep breath in, and knees are going to go over to the right. I'm going to extend my left arm long, shoulders planted evenly, gazing to my left fingertips. And gentle release. Good. Drawing the left knee into the chest, giving it a little squeeze. Extending it heel to the sky. You could bend and straighten. Remember what I was talking about? I like to just run like I'm giving my the back of my leg a massage. Gets it nice and long. Heel to the sky. Staying as you are or feel free to lift forehead up to the knee. And again, you can bend and straighten it, finding what feels good in your beautiful body. And then lowering the torso down, grabbing the knee, little yo or the toe, yogi toe lock on the toe, and then little half happy baby. So knee can be bent or straight, again, the right one. And the left one, you can keep it bent or you can slowly straighten it up to the side, making sure again that you're pressing the right hip down into the mat so it's not lifting off. into the chest. Beautiful. So you can take a pillow, a bolster, a block, a book underneath your sacrum feet to the sky. Really nice little restored posture. Or if you would like to move into plow pose and shoulder stand, another option. If you're going into plow pose and shoulder stand, remember the weight is on the back of the shoulders and the triceps and the back of the head, not on the neck. So if you're finding that your neck is being pressed into the mat, fold up a blanket and put it underneath the shoulders. So the folded part is on the shoulders and towards the top of the mat. I like 
like to take my time in plow pose and just let things lengthen out a little bit before I lift myself up into shoulder stand. I want to make sure things are feeling okay before I stack everything. Time you make your way down to the mat again, ear pinning pose, plow pose again, and this time we're going to move and roll into fish pose. So, planting the hands, palms facing down, thumbs to touch, and then I'm slowly going to lower my legs to the mat and lift my chest to the sky. Resting on forearms and ever so gently on the back of the head. You can keep the legs elevated if you want or you can let them rest on the mat. The throat is wide open, chest is wide open. And in your own beautiful time, release. <sighs> Get a full body stretch. Take an inhale. Arms come down to the side. Exhale into your glorious Shavasana. All is well. Since you're at home, feel free to stay in your Shavasana as long as you would like. If you are ready to come out of it, honor your practice, give gratitude for your practice, and leave it here on the mat. And gently roll onto your side and move into the space of really beautiful gratitude. remembering that all is well and you are absolutely perfect
Good. In your own timing, let's come to a comfortable cross-legged seat. Palms facing up. Let's do posture of receiving. We've done some really nice grounding. So posture of receiving, palms facing up. Before we end the practice, ask for one thing that you want in your life and ask for it as if it's already here. I am abundant. I am joyful, whatever it is. And then bring that intention into heart center. Hands in prayer position. Guiding your intention and the love and light from your heart chakra into the third eye, the seat of intuition. May you have peace in your thoughts. Prayer hands to your lips. May you have peace in your words. Put your hands back to your heart, peace in your heart and your actions. Bowing forward to seal in our practice, yogis. Namaste. Thank you so very much again for joining me. I'm Susie Schock, and I'll be back again tomorrow. I've never done this before, but people keep telling me, ask your viewers to like and subscribe. And I think that sounds really funny, but I think it would be very fun to try to build like 25, 50 likes, maybe even 100. Um, on the videos. So like and subscribe and um, I really appreciate your support. Have a glorious day.